Welcome to Municipal Affairs, the show dedicated to delving deep into the matters that shape municipalities across Canada. As we approach the close of another eventful year, we have the privilege of engaging in a conversation that directly impacts Canadians from across our great country. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by the distinguished guest, the Conservative Party of Canada finance critic and Member of Parliament for Calgary Forest Lawn, Jazraj Singh Holland. In the intricate dance of fiscal policies and economic stewardship, the finance critic plays a vital role in scrutinizing and challenging the financial decisions that shape our country's trajectory. So join us as we sit down with Mr. Holland to reflect on the economic landscape of the last year, unpack the challenges faced by Canadians, and explore the policy initiatives that pave the way for a prosperous future. This is Municipal Affairs. Mr. Holland, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, we're looking back on 2023. From your perspective, I'm going to ask a very political question to start off the bat here. How is the state of Canada at the end of 2023? Uh, it is a housing hell and a country of misery, according to Canadians. I mean, when you look around, everything is up. Taxes are up. Debt is up. Misery is up. Rents are up. Mortgages are up. You know, the only thing that's down right now is our economy, where we have the slowest growth rate. And compared to America, which is booming, Canada's growth rate and uh, our GDP per capita or per person's success rate is way down right now. So and this is not something that are just you see in stats. We just have to look around ourselves when we look at two million people visiting a food bank in a single month. And there's a new phenomenon here in Canada that we've seen is that a middle class family with having two people who are earning an income are now standing in food bank lines. This has never happened before. We see teachers living in their cars, students living under bridges. It is it is a nation of misery right now under eight years of this liberal NDP government and under Justin Trudeau. Um, it, it is not something that I ever thought me and my family would see when we came here. And I know many generations of Canadians or those people that are trying to become Canadians and they're working hard to become Canadians ever thought that this country would turn into this after eight years of Justin Trudeau. Now, I've been speaking to a lot of mayors and councillors from across Canada over the last year, and I'm hearing similar stories of what you've just said, but from a local perspective. When you're crossing Canada, because I follow you on social media, I see that you're always out and you're always visiting other communities as well as staying here in Calgary. But what are you hearing from the, the, the Canadians? Because your time in Ottawa is mostly in question period and the House proceedings. But what are you hearing from Canadians from coast to coast to coast right now? Uh, the pain is real. So whether it's you're going to when when Canadians are opening their fridges, they're seeing less food in there. When they're looking at their bank accounts, there's less in there. When they're looking at their paychecks, there's less on there because the government is taking more. When people are looking at their uh, whether you're renting or whether you're a mortgage holder, you're looking at how much ev more everything is expensive. But then people realize and, and people are, are realizing more and more that it's because the government currently after eight years spent more money than every government before them combined, which led to 40 year highs in inflation that made the interest rate skyrocket. Actually, the most rapid interest rate hikes not seen in Canadian history. And then you throw on a carbon tax that this ideological government threw in that made the cost of gas, groceries and home heating more expensive. So Canadians' paychecks are getting smaller as the government is getting richer off their backs. And that's leading to the pain that I described before. This is all after just eight years of Justin Trudeau being in government, supported by the NDP. And so this is the pain that Canadians are feeling. And that's what's leading to some of the worst outcomes. We see tent cities around the country as well. And it's all because the government has irresponsibly led this country down an economic mess and the mismanagement has led them to the, these outcomes that we see every single day. People's disposable income is shrinking as the government is getting richer off their backs and they're not seeing better outcomes at all. I want to talk about the carbon tax in a few minutes here, but I want to stick to the main issue that you talked about at the top of the interview, and that's housing. When I speak to uh, municipal leaders, housing is a priority for them. Uh, I know that the government and your leader, Pierre Polyev, both have opposing views on what the pa right path forward is. What do you see as the right path forward to ensure we build affordable housing that Canadians can get into? 
Absolutely. This is a great question. So I, I was a, a home builder and developer before this part of my life. And I will tell you that it's a lot of the municipalities that where we're seeing permits are taking forever to be released. We're seeing many, many municipal gatekeepers. And our plan is very clear. It's been tabled in the House of Commons. And I encourage everyone to take a look at our common sense conservative leaders uh, plan, which is build more homes, not bureaucracy. So what it has in it is a few things. Number one, we want to incentivize municipalities to build, build, build. And how we're going to do that is that we're saying if if they can increase their closed permits by 15 percent, that's the target. It actually has a number behind it that they will receive more federal funding for infrastructure. If they don't meet those targets, then that will that funding will be withheld until they get their stuff sorted out. And I know as a home builder, there's a lot of red tape and bureaucracy on a municipal level that isn't letting things get built. That's number one. Number two, we want to see federal lands, 15% of these federal lands that are empty and buildings that are ugly buildings that are just sitting there. We want to sell those off and convert those into, uh, into units immediately overnight. We also want that any federally regulated transit that there's high density built around it for those for for our most vulnerable, whether that's seniors or someone that has a vulnerability or someone that's just barely getting by. Those are the type of people that we need to support more of, and I think that's how we're going to do that. So these are some common sense, um, you know, conservative plans that we have. And I also encourage everyone. Our leader just put out a 15 minute housing video, and it tells the uh, not just the story of the misery and the pain Canadians are feeling and how we got here, but actual solutions on how conservatives would get more homes built in this country. Chris, you know, the number one reason why builders are not building right now, and this is a concern I've been hearing, are the interest rates. And that's also one of the biggest reasons why people aren't getting into a home. So it's a double whammy because the government spent more money than every government before them that made the Bank of Canada raise those interest rates so rapidly to taper off the inflation that was caused by all that deficit spending. That is a double whammy for Canadians, this double trouble for housing. I'm going to ask a very political question here, and I apologize to throw it out in the left field here, but rising price, rising housing prices is, is bad to get into. But for those who have invested into their houses, who are looking at their houses as their potential retirement plan, what do you say to those Canadians who are thinking your your plan seems like it's going to lower my housing price and that means it's going to potentially mean that I'm going to have less money to retire with? Um, I, I would I would argue that today under Justin Trudeau and this NDP government, those people that own a home have much less than they would ever have had before. And they don't need to look further than their either their paychecks because they're not that powerful as they used to be. And on top of that, they have to just look at their mortgage or rent payments. It's very clear. And now the other the other side to the equation is also look at your grocery bills and look at your utility bills as well. Everything is up. Everything is up, which means your your paycheck is getting smaller and smaller. People are not able to retire now. And, and you know, conservatives have a simple plan. It's actually the interest rates that we want to focus on first, which means we need to balance a budget, which the finance minister promised last year, then did a 180 flip-flop on it and caused even more pain because interest rates went up after that. So we need to balance a budget so inflation and interest rates can come down. And and by the way, today, Canada is most at risk in the G7 for a mortgage default crisis because all these mortgages that people were taking out back when the government was saying interest rates are low, go out and borrow as much as you want. But what those people didn't understand or, or, or they didn't know was that the government was going to turn around and pour billions and billions of dollars of inflationary fuel on the fire that the government started that made those interest rates go up. So. That's what I would argue, and we want to make sure that we bring that people can bring home more powerful paychecks by lowering prices, by balancing the budget, and a stronger paycheck by getting rid of the job-killing carbon tax. Let's talk about the carbon tax because your leader Pierre Polyev has said that they want to scrap the tax, as uh, the go phrase that you have used. Uh, right now, in front of the Senate is uh, Bill uh, two three one. If I'm two one three, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know the exact two, number. Two three four. Two three four, which would uh, exclude uh, the carbon tax from farmers. What are you do calling on the senators to do right now to ensure that this does go through because it has passed uh, the House in first and second reading and it's just stalled in the Senate right now. We're asking Justin Trudeau's appointed senators to get out of the way, step down, stand down, and pass Bill C-234, a common sense conservative bill that would take the carbon tax off for our farmers, which would help bring down food. Because 
it's it's just common sense, Chris. If you're taxing with a carbon tax to our farmers who make the food, and you're taxing those the truckers who ship our food, and you're taxing the manufacturers who, who are putting the food together, and taxing the people who are storing the food to sell, at the end of the day, the people buying the food are going to be the ones who are taxed on top of everything else. So, and and you know what? If we get rid of the carbon tax, it would put a huge dent in inflation, which would help the Bank of Canada lower its interest rates immediately. This is coming from the governor of the Bank of Canada's own mouth. And recently, the chief of the chiefs of Ontario, so uh, more than 100 Indigenous communities have come out and are taking this government to court over the carbon tax because even they know that it's not worth the cost. And, you know, our, 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 our uh, leader has been clear. It's only been the Conservative Party that has put multiple motions in the House of Commons to get rid of this tax. But most recently, the NDP teamed with us and said, hey, let's pause the tax for everybody. Let's pause the carbon tax for everyone. And Justin Trudeau, let's call an election based on a carbon tax. Let's call a carbon tax election. Let Canadians decide whether they want a carbon tax or not. And that's how a government should work is let the people decide whether they want it or not. So Bill C-234 is a great way for lowering the price for our, our farmers. And Justin Trudeau needs to tell his senators to stand down and let it pass immediately, like it was passed inside the House of Commons. Just on that note alone, uh... Wasn't the 2019, 2021 elections fought on that issue, the carbon tax? Why is it so different now? Is it just because the conservatives are riding high in the polls or is it because the stories that you're hearing from across Canada right now? Because more and more Justin Trudeau knows and Canadians know that the carbon tax is not worth that cost. He gave a carve out for 3% of Atlantic Canadians. That, that's only 3% of Canadians where his poll numbers were absolutely tanking and his MP started revolting on him. And they left out the rest of the 97% of Canadians. And on top of that, you saw the Rural Economic Affairs Minister from Atlantic Canada say if the Prairie Provinces wanted to carve out, maybe elect more liberals. Well, let's remind people that there are liberals across the, the country. There are Prairie Province ministers, including the one, one in Edmonton, uh, Randy Boissonneau. They couldn't get a carve out. So either they're, they're absolutely voiceless or, or irrelevant inside their own caucuses that they weren't able to get a carve out. Canadians deserve this break. And, and I would highly argue that today, more than ever, not only just Albertans, across Canada, Canadians are overwhelmingly against this carbon tax. I, I want to turn to the future now because I am cautious of time and I know you're a busy man. I want to, I want to talk about what, what's in store for 2024. So we, we do not know when the next election is going to happen. So you are going to be relegated to the opposition benches for a little bit more until an election is called. What do you need to do? What does the Conservative Party need to do to make sure that this government is held to account in this minority situation? Yeah, so we're going to continue to do uh, hold this government to account in many different ways. We're going to continue to try to make the cost of living go down by putting more common sense bills and motions in front that'll help with housing, like I've already outlined, getting rid of the carbon tax or pausing it for all Canadians, and just generally trying to balance, get them to balance the budget to bring it down. But let me be clear what a common sense conservative plan would do. We're going to bring home more powerful paychecks. We're going to make sure that, like I said, balance the budget to bring down the cost of everything so taxes come down. But another side to that is, and you know, Chris, we're both from the greatest province, you know, in Canada, from Alberta. We need to make sure our resources get to market. We need to green light green projects. So these green projects that would help bring uh, economic boost, bring better jobs, bring bring good good paying jobs and more powerful paychecks. We need to we need to put those on basically like they say, put them on steroids because. Canadians deserve that. The world needs that more. Because if we can replace dirty dictator oil from across, in, across the world, we can also replace dictator dollars for dictators with more powerful paychecks for our Canadian people. We know Canada's resources rich, especially Alberta. That would help our books as well. Because you don't just look at, uh, when in any business, you don't just look at where you can save money. You have to look at the other equation, which is how do we bring in more revenue? So that's what, as a common sense conservative government would do. We need to bring home lower prices by axing the carbon tax. That would bring the cost of gas, groceries, and home heating down. Can, can conservatives would also bring home more homes that people can afford. And like I said, you just have to look up the Build More Homes, Not Bureaucracy Act and we'll watch our, our leader's uh, do current documentary that he put out. We want to bring home safer streets. We've seen all across this country, crime chaos disorder is way up. We need to put more funding and not take away guns from our, our, our hunters and our indigenous communities. We should be using that billion dollars into 
beefing up CBSA so the import and export of illegal drugs and guns can be stopped at the border. And crime is way up. We need to work on jail and not bail. That's Those are the kind of reforms we want to bring in. And lastly, we need to bring home more freedom. Whether it's we see, we see online how much the, the censorship that's happening in this country. Many people move to this country because they were censored in the places that they move from. And the common thing I hear now is, why did we move away from a country that used to do that to us to another country that's doing the exact same thing to us? So we're going to bring home more freedoms for people. That's our common sense five-step plan that I've highlighted that conservatives will follow through on. And that's what I want to keep people that they're, that conservatives will turn the hurt they're saying today after eight years of this liberal NDP government and that Justin Trudeau has cost into the hope that Canadians deserve. Because the Canadian dream where my, where my family came here for, that's what all Canadians deserve. It doesn't matter if you're a generational Canadian or one that's trying to become one. You deserve to have the Canadian dream again. I want to just turn to a local a little bit for a second as MP of Calgary Forest Lawn. What do you hope to achieve for your residents, your constituents of Calgary Forest Lawn? Uh, what are you hearing from them and what, what what's in store for them for 2024? Uh, I'm assuming the pre uh, the uh, pre, I was going to say premier, but I'm assuming Pierre Polyev is going to be back for your 2024 stampede breakfast, I'm assuming. But what else do you have in store for Calgary Forest Lawn of 2024? Absolutely. I just want to first thank the greatest people in Canada, the, the great people of Calgary Forest Lawn for electing me and once again putting their faith in me. Last year we had a, a we had ten thousand people show up to the breakfast. I'm so honored that they did that, and I know it's only going to get bigger. But what we well, the number one concern that my residents have, that the people of Calgary Forest Lawn, my bosses have, are the cost of living, crime, and of course housing. Those three plans are what we continuously fight for. Uh, you know, I put forward some of these motions to help lower the cost of living for people. And I talked about our plan to bring home more powerful paychecks and jobs. These are the biggest concerns that we see in Calgary Forest on crime. We have like, I'm so proud of the people of Calgary Forest on because it's the, it's the area me and my family moved to. We have such a high population of people who, of immigrants in our communities. And we literally have a, a street called international Avenue where the Canadian dream is supposed to be full up and alive, where people can live the home owner, the, the dream of owning a business. But more than ever, businesses are being taxed, a carbon tax on top of them, and, and most of them are leveraging their houses. It's so, it's so unfortunate what's happening to those businesses. What I can say to those great people are, look, there is hope on the horizon because we're going to lower those interest rates by balancing the budget. We're going to get rid of the carbon tax. We're going to make sure that we bring bring safety back on our streets by, by focusing on the bail uh, system by jail and not bail jail and not bail those are the kind of things that i will continue to fight for inside the house of commons and be their voice in ottawa and not the other way around uh my last question for you before i have to let you go here is we've we've talked about a lot of things that have happened in 2023 and 20 what you have in store for 24 24 but what else would you want the people who i have listeners from across canada who are municipal leaders usually what would you want them to know about your government your party uh pierre polyev and yourself as finance critic let's work together to incentivize more building and less red tape that's my simple message. That's our conservative uh, leaders. A simple message. It is in that plan. Build more homes, not bureaucracy. It's as simple as that. We need to get the gatekeepers out of the way and make sure that we're building, building, building as much as we can because Canadians deserve to have uh, affordable homes, affordable rent like it once used to be. It, it, after eight years of Justin Trudeau, rents have doubled. Mortgages have doubled. The interest rates are skyrocketing. This didn't happen before Justin Trudeau, and it won't happen after Justin Trudeau is gone because we're going to have a common sense conservative leader in place. And that's all for today's special episode of Municipal Affairs. We'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude for all of those who have tuned in and watched this episode. Your support means the world to us. Remember, our mission is to bring you the most important municipal stories from across Canada, and we can't do it without you. So please keep those stories coming, share your municipal news, concerns, and even triumphs with us. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding lights onto the issues that truly matter in our communities. Your voices are essential, and we're here to amplify them. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking. Thank you.